Hi everyone, my name is Kazuya Saito. I'm Associate Professor at University College London. In this video, I would like to give you a quick literature review on up-to-date status of teaching second language listening skills. Among researchers, there is a consensus that attaining a good level of second language listening skills should be considered as the most fundamental element of successful second language learning. This is because second language listening matters everywhere. For example, if we want to have a conversations with native speakers of English as well as other second language users of English, you need to be able to understand what's happening in these conversations. If you decide to study abroad and attend these lectures all delivered in second language English, you should be able to understand what professors are talking about so that you can pass pass and get a degree successfully. Finally, this may be a very popular way of enjoying learning second language English, that is watching videos, TV series, and movies through online platforms such as Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime. And this can also boost the amount of communicatively authentic input that many English as a foreign language students typically lack all over the world. Therefore, in this video, I would like to talk about three things. One, what underlies the successful second language listening? Two, what kind of knowledge needs to be taught? Finally, what's the best way to teach second language listening skills? So now let's begin with the mechanism underlying successful second language listening. So this is what researchers have done so far. Researchers have recruited and asked many second language learners to take general listening proficiency tests, such as TOEFL, IELTS, Cambridge University tests. And then later, they interviewed and checked what characterizes these participants, particularly those who have scored very high in this test. In this way, they can scrutinize the learner profiles of so-called successful second language listeners. And the findings so far have been very consistent and straightforward. That is, global second language listening proficiency can be mainly determined by vocabulary. So 60 to 50% of the success in this test can be explained by how much vocabulary size participants have. And second of all, strategies can explain 10 to 20% of success. Finally, cognitive abilities can explain 10 to 20% of success. So how well they can memorize, how well they can concentrate. Finally, how well they're able to keep up with the speed of natural English speech. And here's a list of references for these key studies. Based on these findings, let's talk about what kind of knowledge should be taught as a priority. Number one priority is no doubt listening vocabulary size. And number two, strategies. And number three, memory attention speed. I put the strategies as a second priority simply because research has shown that we can teach strategies versus it has remained very controversial how to help train one's memory attention speed abilities. So let's talk about how to teach these features. As I said earlier, number one priority is definitely vocabulary. According to literature, there are approximately 54,000 word families in English. It is very important to note that research has also shown that 90% of oral discourse, such as spontaneous conversations, TV, and movies, comprises only 4,000 word families, which researchers term as frequent words. As long as second language students know these frequent words, it has been demonstrated that they can guarantee optimal, not the perfect level of understanding. What this means is that students are able to grasp 70 to 80% of what's happening. Therefore, what teachers should do is to check students' vocabulary size as a priority. And this is the way how researchers and teachers have typically measured students' vocabulary size. You can Google myvocabularysize.com. This is an online platform developed by a range of scholars at University of Victoria, Wellington. But my colleague Stuart McLean published this paper in Language Teaching Research 2014, showing and arguing that listening vocabulary size is actually different from written vocabulary size. What this means is that knowing the spelling of words is not necessarily created with knowing phonological aspects of words. Therefore, my research team has conducted a bunch of studies where we are trying to find out what's the best way to teach phonological aspects of word knowledge. And our conclusion is very simple. It really depends on students' first language backgrounds. This is because certain pronunciation features are particularly problematic for a particular group of second language learners. For example, we have created a list of English pronunciation features relatively important for Japanese students of English. So we have developed materials, uploaded them onto our website so that everybody can use for free. Second priority is use of strategies. What teachers can do is to use Metacognitive Awareness Listening Questionnaire, which was developed by Christina Go and Larry Vandergrift, and we can check which strategies students are good at or poor at. And what are these strategies relevant to successful second language listening? There are five elements. One, you can pre-plan before listening. Two, 
you can concentrate and guess details while listening. And number four, you feel less anxious and nervous while listening. And finally, you will avoid a one translation while listening. According to Christine Gold and Larry Vandercliff, what's really important is not only measure students' strengths and weaknesses in strategy use, but also talk about these things in classrooms. If you, if you are interested in how to introduce and talk about listening strategies, you can check their website. And finally, cognitive ability. As I said earlier, it has remained very controversial in terms of the effectiveness of training on development of memory and attention. But when it comes to processing speed, there is some kind of hope. There is empirical evidence that the speed at which native speakers speak English is three times faster than the way inexperienced second language users speak English. So one interesting way to let students being familiar with the natural speed of how native speakers of English speak is the reading while listening. So reading while listening has been found to facilitate students' adjustment to the optimal speed of first language English, which is typically four syllables per second. Research has also shown that reading while listening can promote the both sound and spelling aspects of new word learning. And if you're interested more in this topic, you can check Professor Stuart Webb and Takumi Uchihara's work. There are a bunch of websites and materials that you can use for this purpose. But I really would like to emphasize that listening, teaching, and learning must not stop there. It should continue even outside of classrooms. So as long as students are well equipped with these fundamental listening skills, vocabulary, strategy, and speed, thanks to your teaching, they should be encouraged to continue to seek more opportunities to listen, watch, communicatively authentic input. Students should watch as many TV movies that they like as possible. It is very important to point out that more watching is better. And researchers have argued that watching TV series rather than watching random videos and movies is considered to be more effective and better. This is simply because words are repeated more often and context can be more guessable. Now I would like to provide some key message to future graduate students who are interested in TESOL research. I would like to stress that teaching and researching second language listening vocabulary and pronunciation is actually ignored in many parts of the world simply because there is little research on these topics. In my view, this may explain why many second language students are struggling with the development of good listening skills. More work is definitely needed, especially when it comes to how to teach listening vocabulary. That's the number one priority in successful second language listening skill acquisition. And examining this topic has a great deal of practical and theoretical relevance. Therefore, what this means is that this could be a very good topic for publications in the future. If you're interested in this line of work, I would like to refer you to these key papers. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have found this video to be very useful for your teaching and future research. Thank you. Bye-bye.